Hey guys, Eli again for Mobox Graphics. As you can see we are going to make a Japanese corridor in Cinema 4D. We will cover some really basic modeling techniques and then set up some realistic lighting for it. The corridor is actually made out of segments, so every piece between two pillars is one segment. Let's start with our first segment, its floor. You can use a plane for this and make it 300 by 300. Now for the pillars, get a cylinder and their radius of 10 cm looks nice and it is also an easy number to work with. Let's also make it 240 cm long, which is also a realistic number. When you hold shift you can move with increments of 10 cm and move this into the corner right here. Let's also duplicate it to the other side for now. And next up are the connections between those pillars. So get yourself a cube and the width of 280 will work best for this, because 300 would make it stick out from the other sides of the pillars. A thickness of 5 cm seems alright and let's make them about 10 cm wide. Now you can move this in position while holding shift again. Let's also make a second one by holding command or control and dragging it down. You can also hold shift at the same time by the way. I'm going to do this one more time to somewhere at the bottom and this one can be thinner but higher. You'll see why in just a minute. Now it is time to add the small vertical connections in between those horizontal ones. I'm once more going to duplicate this one, make it 10 by 10 and scale it vertically so it connects to the floor and this other cube. When I zoom in here you can see why I wanted this bottom one to be a different size. These kind of small details make your scene more convincing. Most of the time something feels wrong because it actually looks too simple. Now what we would like to have right here is five of these cubes evenly distributed across the length of this piece. You could calculate this yourself but it is easier to use a cloner object. So drag your cube inside of it and in the cloner options you need to set the mode to grid array for this one. Down here decrease the count on all directions except the one that matches what you're looking for. And now you can see why we are using the grid array mode instead of linear. It is because we can now set the size in which these cubes need to be distributed, which would be 300 in this case. Let's also increase our count, but you want to get 7 instead of 5 and that is because these outer two will be sitting exactly in the center of our big pillars. Now if you take a closer look at the outer two ones, you can see they will not line up. And that is because the cloner calculates from the center of our object, which is 10 cm big. We have two of those on both sides, so let's change our 300 to 280. And as you can see it now fits just perfect. When you're sure it's correct, you can press C on the keyboard to make them editable. So we can modify the second and fourth one. So select these. Press C on the keyboard and go in our polygon mode and then select the top polygons. By pressing D you will get the extrude tool, so we can raise these a little above the other horizontal one. Now press I to get the inner extrusion tool and just drag it in a little. And finally make the last extrusion to connect it with the top layer. Ok so that is it for the bottom part, let's get ourselves another of these cubes and place it at the top. Now you can see it doesn't line up again, because it is calculating from the center of our objects. So down here you can move it down by just a few centimeters. I'm gonna make a second one and move it by 50. And now to make a vertical connection in the middle, you can just rotate the cube while holding command or control and holding shift as well. To fill this section right here we will be using a plane object. And by now you can probably guess it should be 280 by 50. Alright, we are going to finish things up at the other side now. To have a little more variation we will be using cubes for the pillars instead of cylinders again. But make sure to make them 20 by 20, because the 10 cm from the cylinders was the radius and not the exact size. We can also select the upper portion here and just duplicate it to the other side. You can do this by holding control or command and shift again. We can also reuse one of the horizontal connections again and move the duplicate down by 110 cm. You probably don't want it to line up exactly with the other side of the corridor, just for variation's sake. 
For the next part it is easier to enable any shading with lines so you can see what you're actually working with. Now we can see where we will be adding segments to our cube. In this case we want two segments over the entire length. Now after pressing C to make it editable we can go in our polygon mode and select this inner bottom one. Now just extrude it all the way to the floor and as a nice little detail you can extrude this portion here as well. As a final part of this side of our segment we will be adding the window frame. For this it is a good idea to use a new cube again. We only need it to be about 4 cm thick. And getting the exact fit might be a little bit of trial and error. But you want to make sure it overlaps every side ever so slightly so no light can leak through from the sides. When you think you've got everything into place add 15 segments on the x axis and 5 on the y axis. Depending on how good of a job you did placing the cube, you can now tell mine is overlapping too much at the left and the right side. So when everything fits nice and snug now, make the object editable and select all the polygons at the front. Make sure you're not selecting anything at the back. And now press I on the keyboard for the in extrusion tool again. And with preserve groups deselected you can drag inwards a little so we get these little frames. Now it is just a matter of pressing D for the extrude tool and pushing in the selected polygons. Make sure you don't go through the polygon in the back. You still need to see the yellow selection. Before deselecting these all you can hit backspace or delete to get rid of those. Otherwise we would not be able to see through our window. But if you look at the back there are still our polygons here as well. So select those and delete them. So that is the frame of our window. But something typical about Japanese interiors is how they use these thin sheets of paper instead of glass. For now we can already get a placeholder for this by duplicating this plane from the top and just resize it roughly so it overlaps the whole window. To finish our corridor segment we need to add a ceiling to it. There often are beams holding the ceiling, so that is what we will be doing. This can be done with a cloner object again. So let's use this beam as our base object and set our cloner to grid array again, so we can enter the exact dimensions. For this one it looks like we need to add our count to the last field here. Also don't forget to set our size to 300 as well. Now make sure you put it in place again. You can use the position field down here to help you out. And make sure to hit enter or apply to see the changes you entered. Or actually it has to be 280 so it aligns correctly. And now let's take a look at the beam count again. I think it looks best when we get 4 visible beams instead of 5. So there isn't one running exactly in the middle of our ceiling. As you can tell we actually need to add 6 of these instead of 4 to get this going. Now the final step for this is duplicating the floor plane to the top and making sure it slightly overlaps the beams so we don't get weird shadows going on later. Before we move on select all our objects by pressing Ctrl or Command and A and group them by pressing Alt and G. Let's duplicate this group and hide the original. This one will be a little bit different so we have some variation in the corridor. Something with a door might look nice. So delete the window frame and the paper sheet behind it. Also get rid of this wall at the bottom. And I'm going to recycle some of our objects again and duplicate this top connection to the bottom. Maybe also a second one which I'm moving up by a hundred. We will resize this in just a moment. First we need to add another one of these but vertically. Let's also make sure it fits in between our top and bottom connection. And now we want one on every side so we get a door opening. You can eyeball this but to get it exactly symmetrical it is a good idea to keep the one at the middle and duplicate in even numbers to both sides. Now we can delete this middle one and go resize this horizontal connection. It doesn't need to be exact just enough to overlap both ends. And finally we can duplicate one of our planes and place them in those frames. I also see I forgot a piece here so I'm quickly gonna duplicate it. There we go, we have our two base pieces now. Just to have an overview we can unhide the original and move it to the side a little. 
it will not be exactly 300 centimeters again so moving it back 20 centimeters does the job you may have noticed we now have overlapping pillars so actually you can delete them at one side of your model as a final detail we are going to add some little chimes we can hang on the left side so things don't get too repetitive obviously you can add anything you like it will only enhance the look of your model but for this it is easier to open a new document we can do all of this with just cylinders there are no exact dimensions for this we will just eyeball every piece relative to the other ones and i'm using four pieces and making them editable so i can select the bottom points and give a different length to each one of them now for the frame that holds them just use another bigger and shorter cylinder and we can easily place this in the top view let's hide it for now so we can make the cords that hang from it we can do this by selecting all our cylinder objects and going in the polygon mode so we can select all the top polygons while holding shift now pressing I we can make an inner extrusion again and now with the D key we can extrude these as if it were cords let's see if it connects with our bigger frame now just duplicate this big one here moving it up and scaling it down and I'm gonna duplicate this once more making it long and thin which is the cord that connects from the ceiling to make the final cord connections to the bottom piece we can use just another cylinder like the one at the top but make it editable again this time and the easiest way to get this done is selecting the bottom points here and dragging these out to one of the sides and if you go to the object mode now you can duplicate these while rotating and it will keep the top perfectly centered now we can also delete this middle one I've left here let's group this up copy it back to our other file and after pasting it it obviously needs some rescaling and I think it looks nice when we put it in a segment with our window great now we will turn this all into a long corridor so we can do this with the cloner object again and drag both our segments inside of it we can leave the chimes as they are for now you can see it isn't exactly cloning nicely and that is because it is giving us a clone every 50 centimeters down here we don't need it to go up so set it to zero instead give it a value of 280 on the x-axis you can put in any number of clones now to get a really long corridor but right now you can still see this kind of weird because we have a window a door another window and so on and there are a lot of doors for my liking so i'm going to quickly disable the cloner here and we will be adding more of our window segments by just copying and pasting them inside the cloner I think it looks nice when we have three windows and one door the last window segment is a good one to put our chimes in so just drag the group inside of our null now we can enable the cloner again and maybe increase the count a little so that was all the modeling there is to it you can keep adding small details in the base models but I think this will do for the tutorial the rest of this video will be dedicated to lighting this scene so I'm quickly going to set things up here so we can make some comparison images but you don't need to do that we will try to make this as realistic as possible with the least amount of effort and render time so if we render it untouched it is basically useless the first thing we will be doing is going in the render settings and adding an ambient occlusion effect this already gives us some shading but it hasn't reached its real potential just yet let's create a regular light I like setting the color to a soft orange to make it warmer and we can already set our shadow to area for some realistic shadows the placement of this light will make a lot of difference it will be an exterior light so in other words the sun and that means it needs to be far away so all the shadows come from one direction no matter where we are in the corridor the easiest way to do this is going in our top view and zooming out a lot now you can place it anywhere you think looks all right but i'm sticking with a diagonally behind it let's also go in our front view to raise it up you can also do this in a diagonally manner when i render now there is a little problem which is that the windows are fully blocked we need to make a new material for those by double clicking at the bottom here when we open it enable the transparency channel and set the brightness to something like 70% let's quickly disable our cloner 
and move the base models next to each other so we can see what is going on. And now you can drag and drop the material on each of these planes. In our render things are starting to look more interesting. To take this to a next level we need to add a global illumination in our render settings first. As it is right now, this will take a lot of time to render because there is not enough light inside of the corridor. So it needs time to calculate all the small bounces of light that come from the floor. But there are multiple ways to add more light. Because this corridor is open, it is a good option to use a physical sky. For the time allocation I found 1030 seems to be a perfect match for this one. We can play around with this to get some nice effects, but that is just up to you. If you go out of the corridor, and look around and locate the sun. You want to make sure it comes from somewhat the same direction as where you placed your regular light. So just rotate it in place. One last thing to do with the physical sky is going in the sun tab and at the bottom set the shadow to none. We already get our shadows from the other light so we don't want to mess these up. In the render you can now see this is the total game changer in this scene. It already looks nice right now. But what I don't like with these renders like hallways and corridors is that everything looks just as sharp all the way to the end. So we will be doing what filmmakers also do and that is adding some fog. They also use smoke machines to fill their rooms and that is because that way everything in the background will have less contrast than the important stuff in the foreground. So to do this create an environment object and if I remember correctly you can only do this when you already have a sky or physical sky in your scene. All we need to do now is clicking on enable fog. When we render now you can see everything is a little brighter but we also have this nice white background instead of the sky. The effect is also stronger if we move further away in the corridor so that is something you want to do. And maybe everything is a little too bright right now, so because our physical sky is the biggest light source, go inside of it and go to the sun tab again, and we can lower the intensity of it. I also noticed I did something wrong here, which is that I added the transparent material on the window frame of course. So I will quickly fix this right now. So that is all it takes to get the end result. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope to catch you in the next one.